So I gotta figure out what the extent of the damage is on the inside of this turntable. Um, so I'm gonna flip it over, get the screws out. Okay, so I gotta get into this motor and see if anything looks out of place. So I need to take this plate off the motor. So there's a screw here on this side, screw here on this side I already took off. And then there's two here, but there is some silicone here that runs along this um, plate or cover. But we need to get in here because there's a little speed sensor and there's also a little tiny piece of plastic that holds the spindle in place and if that plastic is bad or it moves then the spindle can have issues so I need to get inside this motor to do so so I'm gonna have to remove it completely from the turntable and to do that I'll have to just disconnect these wires here which I already did that and then take these screws out one two three four and then pull the whole motor out just comes right out as you can see so now what I need to do is clean off all of this silicone so there's one screw there's little tiny washers in here too so got to be careful with that as well and again this might not even fix the issue this is just some other videos that I've looked up, research that I've done. Let's use this flathead here. Be very careful not to slice myself. So if you can see, this is, I'm just kind of going along the line here with the flathead, little flathead screwdriver. Okay, so now I'm just going to try to get underneath here, which I did, okay, very carefully, I'm going to lift this up, now if you look, this is that little speed sensor so it's almost like a an optical sensor like that little black ring here those are all little tiny lines and that little optical sensor what it's doing is when this rotates it's counting all of those lines and that's what's telling the turntable how fast the motor is spinning so I'm not sure if this is the way that this is supposed to be, but this is that little black spacer. Now if you look, you can actually see there's an in, like a little indention here. Now I'm not too sure if that indention has always been there, or if it's something that's kind of wore itself in, and that indention's not supposed to be there. And it looks like, from my knowledge, is there needs to be a specific space in between the sensor so if you look here you can kind of see how this moves up and down okay if it's too far down it might not read correctly so I'm thinking it needs to be more in the middle like about right here so that it's not too far down like this and it's not too high up it's got to be like somewhere in the middle of that sensor and 
um, that's kind of where it would read so I need to figure out what I can put here that's relatively the same thickness I mean I could flip this over but I don't know if that's gonna fix anything or I don't know I'm gonna have to figure out something something I could put there that's not gonna wear down so it can't be too thick but it can't be too thin either all right guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, 3d print a little spacer here um, I took the measurements with my caliper and the uh, circumference of this is about 7.8 millimeters and then the thickness is about 0 0.50 so I'm gonna 3d print a couple of these I guess and then I'll test it out and see if that'll work better um, than this little piece here because what's happening is the spindle here this little bearing starts to push down into this metal here and then you get too much um, play uh, with the spindle where it starts to get too much of a of like a up and down movement okay so this is the little disc that I 3d printed um, so I used the dimensions it's a one uh, 7.80 circumference wise and then the thickness was uh, 0 0.55 and then of course you know there's gonna be a little bit of an expansion on the plastic so it's actually about 0 0.6 so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some of this double-sided tape I'm gonna put it down here and then uh, I can test this and see if it's the right height but the cool thing is by putting this down this double-sided tape I'll be able to put this right in the middle and push it down like that so now it'll kind of stay in place that'll allow me to close this up so I have it on here staying in place which is a good thing perfect so it's spinning pretty nice um, so I'm going to try putting this back together and then we'll see if this is going to fix my issue which I don't know if it will if it won't alright so let's tighten these up Okay, now we can flip it over. Okay guys, so I just wanted to show you this procedure on how to fix the spacer on your PDX motor. Um, unfortunately for me, this did not fix my issue. It ended up being the transistors that needed to be replaced. But this has helped and fixed other DJ's issues in the past with their motors. Um, me 3D printing the little spacer did work perfectly fine for me so I just wanted to let you know that that is a viable option
So hopefully this video helps you guys out and I'll keep making more as I get more stuff in. Thanks.